Hello and welcome to Oakland's Jack London Square Station. Today we're taking a look at Amtrak San Joaquin's brand new Siemens Venture coaches as we head up to Martinez, California. Oakland's Jack London Square Station was opened in May of 1995. The station serves as a replacement for Southern Pacific 16th Street Station, which had been severely damaged in the 1989 Loma Prieta earthquake. Oakland Station is an absolutely gorgeous facility. All but one of the station's walls feature glass construction, the ceiling vaulted high above the waiting room floor. While the station is pretty, it's not open quite yet. The waiting room doesn't officially open until 7 a.m., and although the station clock shows just past 7, the doors remain locked until closer to 7.10. To get the weekend timetable started here in Oakland is Amtrak Capital Corridor Train 720, the train pulling in from Amtrak's Oakland Yard. Train 720 today is formed of the usual set of California coaches and F-59 PHI number 2004 for power. The California cars are very similar to Amtrak's Superliner fleet, but were designed for inner city service on Amtrak California's routes. Train 720's quick stop wraps up, Locomotive 2004 pushing the consist out of Oakland to begin its two-hour ride to Sacramento. Returning to the station building, we can step inside for a brief look at the waiting room. Inside the glass structure, passengers will find plenty of seating, an Amtrak ticketing and baggage desk, bathrooms, and a few vending machines. The interior doesn't necessarily match the exterior in terms of its glamour, but it gets the job done. A horn rings out through the station building, and rushing out to the platforms, we spot our train pulling in. Powering train 710 today is Siemens SC44 Charger Locomotive number 2106, followed by six beautiful Siemens Venture coaches and cab control car 9225 on the rear. From the outside, these San Joaquin's Venture coaches look awesome. Delivery isn't too flashy, the design sticking with a more minimalistic stripes and steel color scheme. I personally think the use of color looks smart and modern, the yellow strip and doors accenting the entry points on each car. The exterior screens, while not a new feature, are much easier to read, their bright orange dot matrix easily discernible even at a distance. Although these cars are designed with high-level floors, Venture cars include automatic doors with extending stairs to meet the low-level boarding requirements for Caltrans services. The Venture cars also include onboard wheelchair lifts with wider gantries for greater accessibility for passengers with disabilities. Ascending the stairs, we enter Amtrak San Joaquin's brand new Siemens Venture coaches. Finding a seat in one of the less populated cars, the doors slide shut and train 710 departs towards Bakersfield. As we head out of Oakland, let's take a look at our brief ride over to Martinez. Our journey begins heading northwest out of Oakland and past Amtrak's Oakland Yard before turning north. We make our first stop in Emeryville, the bay visible briefly before heading inland for our stop in Richmond. 
The railway then becomes waterfront real estate, the tracks winding away along the coastline. We cross under the Alfred Zampa Memorial Bridge, continuing along the Carquinez Strait before arriving in Martinez at the end of our journey. We'll cover a total of 32 miles on our ride today, with a travel time of 45 minutes. Just north of Oakland is Amtrak's Oakland Maintenance Facility. Here, Amtrak maintains cars and locomotives for the San Joaquin's and Capitol Corridor inner city trains and for Amtrak's California Zephyr long distance service. It's time for a look at Amtrak's newest rolling stock. At a first glance, passengers will notice the same interiors as onboard Amtrak's Midwest fleet. The layout is the same, the seat maquette is the same, everything is the same. And that's because, as far as the coach cars go, they are the same. The San Joaquin's and Amtrak Midwest Venture cars are from the same order, and thus feature the same interiors as one another. Caltrans and IDOT ordered a total of 146 Venture coaches, with Caltrans ordering seven seven-car train sets, while IDOT opted for a mix of married pairs and single coaches. First things first, we'll take a look at the seating on board. Venture coaches are operated in a standard 2x2 layout. The layout is static, with only half of the car facing the direction of travel at any one time. The majority of each coach is set up with airline-style rows, though there are a few groups of four with tables scattered throughout the car. Each airline-style row offers around 7 inches of legroom between my knees and the seat back, with additional space beneath each row for carry-on bags. The seat back sleeve is decently sized, though personal belongings can fall right through, so be careful if you plan to use it. A large tray table folds down from the seat back. The table is super deep and more than wide enough to accommodate the largest of laptops, with a small indent for drinks. Coat hooks are found beside the headrest in each row. Above each row are two bright LED reading lights, beside which are roller blinds to cover the massive panoramic windows. Beside each seat is a thin padded armrest, the one between each seat providing some much needed separation between seats. Beneath the central armrest are two outlets and two USB ports, the sockets finally solving the age-old problem of Amtrak's wall outlets being inaccessible to aisle seat passengers. Unlike their California coach counterparts, Venture coach seats can recline. Pushing the button on the outside of each seat reclines the seat back and moves the bottom cushion forward. The forward movement allows for each seat to recline without moving backwards into another passenger's space. As a result of this action, the recline distance is limited to only about 2 or 3 inches. The physical seats have long been a point of contention throughout the rollout of the Venture fleet. The seat style is much more akin to that of European inner city trains, with thinner upholstery and that slide-forward recline mechanism. The changes come as a result for demands of greater seating capacity, which reduce space between rows, thus dictating the cushioning and maximum recline angle. This thinner, tougher upholstery means that these seats are really only comfortable for up to three hours, maybe four tops. Anything beyond that, and it will certainly not be pleasant. That being said, I don't mind the Venture seats all that much. I think they're fairly comfortable and aren't all too different comfort-wise from the seats on the California coaches. While the upholstery is a toss-up for most, I do quite like the mix of fabric and leather, allowing breathability on the back while remaining easy to clean and comfortable. Plus, the large winged headrests provide great support for when passengers want to get some shut-eye. Also, I've seen it mentioned that the San Joaquin's and Midwest Venture seats are different from Brightline's coach seats, and from what I can tell, they aren't. Visually comparing the two, the main difference is the two-tone leather seat covers and altered aisle handle geometry, but upholstery-wise, they're the same. The back and bottoms are identical, with the same headrest and armrest in each car. Some may think the Brightline seats are thicker, but that can likely be chalked up to the illusion of depth created by the darker central leather. While the seating may not be an upgrade from previous cars, the rest of the interiors most certainly are. The interiors are significantly brighter and more open. LED strips run down the center of each car for artificial light, with plenty of natural light spilling in from the massive windows. Passenger information is never more than a few rows away, with four LED displays spaced out down the aisle. The signs are super bright and clear, making them legible from pretty much anywhere in the coach. Digital audio announcements are also a new feature for the San Joaquin's coaches, though the system isn't without fault. From Oakland to Emeryville, the same announcement played on repeat. Welcome on board Amtrak San Joaquin's. 
This is train. 710. This train's final destination is Bakersfield. The crew had to come on over the PA to inform passengers that the system would be fixed upon departure from Emeryville. Above each row of seats are smaller luggage racks for personal belongings. The glass bottom is a nice touch, which reflects the light from the windows below, aiding in cabin illumination. For larger bags and bicycles, venture coaches provide large luggage racks at the ends of each car. If you're enjoying our look at Amtrak San Joaquin's new venture coaches, why not hit that subscribe button? It's totally free and it really helps support the channel. If you want to go the extra mile with your support, then check out the channel's Patreon or become a channel member. If you too want your name in the video or just want to support the channel in more ways than one, then head on over to the links in the description below. The massive windows of our new coach provide some fantastic views of the beautiful Bay Area morning. Although only visible for a few minutes, the San Francisco skyline and Golden Gate Bridge appear through the trees. The bay will soon fill the window, but our train must first head inland for a stop in Richmond. Food service has been a big question mark surrounding the San Joaquin's venture fleet. The initial plan stated that each train set would include a full cafe car. This was then swapped for a vending machine coach, much like that on the state-supported Piedmont service, an announcement which was met with plenty of public outcry. This notably wasn't a decision by Amtrak themselves, but instead by the San Joaquin Joint Powers Authority, the operator of the San Joaquin service. Of course, the rollout of these new trains does not include food service cars, as those are still under construction. As a stopgap, passengers are offered complimentary snack boxes and bottles of water throughout their journey. Cracking open the snack box, we find a bag of Salsitas chips, a granola bar, walnuts, and a bag of chocolate chip cookies. Does it work for a snack? Sure. But is it a vending machine or a viable alternative to a full cafe car? Absolutely not. On journeys that could last upwards of six hours, the option for a hot meal or at least something more substantial than a vending machine snack is an absolute necessity, but all hope may not be lost on San Joaquin's cafe cars. Amtrak San Joaquin's has publicly said, quote, As the venture cars continue to roll out, adjustments and improvements will be made to eventually include cafe cars. So are cafe cars coming? Hopefully so. When? I have no idea. But at least the issue has been recognized and will be fixed moving forward. As we sit and enjoy our snacks, the waters of the bay creep up beside us, eventually butting up against the railway. It is an absolutely gorgeous morning here in the Bay Area, the clear blue sky matching that of the calm Bay waters. As the tracks turn east, the waters outside transition into the Carquina Strait. The eight mile long strait connects Susun Bay to San Pablo Bay. One feature advertised on these new coaches is improved Wi-Fi. Connecting to the network is easy and we're online in only a few taps. The network speeds are quite impressive. The initial test shows a download speed of 14.52 megabits per second, which is more than enough to stream entertainment or work on the go. I also ran a few tests after this one just to make sure it wasn't a fluke and all returned similar results. Bathrooms are one of the greatest improvements on the Venture Coaches over the previous rolling stock. All bathrooms on Venture Coaches are wheelchair accessible, with push-button operation for easy access. The bathrooms on board are amazing. Each facility is huge, with plenty of space to move around in, especially for passengers with disabilities. The sink and soap are both motion-activated, however the integrated dispenser is empty, hence the bottle of Amtrak soap provided. Tissues are located just below the mirror, with an electric hand dryer off to one side in lieu of paper towels. The toilet paper is well stocked, sitting alongside the motion-activated flush controls and outlets. The toilet itself is very clean and looks significantly nicer than anything I've seen in the rest of Amtrak's fleet. 
These bathrooms are a massive step up from the California and Comet cars, and I'm glad more will be coming to routes across the United States. Returning to our seat, the straight continues by our side. The spans of the Carquinez Bridge fly up and over the straight ahead, and consist of two parallel bridges. The western bridge is the Alfred Zampa Memorial Bridge, which was built as a replacement to the original Carquinez Bridge in 2003, while the eastern bridge is a parallel bridge built just east of the original 1927 span. Shipping traffic is a common sight on the strait. Out on the water, a massive bulk goods ship heads eastward towards Susun Bay. The views of the calm waters must come to an end as our train approaches Martinez. Yes. If Martinez is your stop. Please gather all of your belongings and prepare to exit the train. While waiting in the vestibule, it's worth pointing out that these cars include open steer wells near each door, so be careful when traversing the train. Our train pulls to a stop in Martinez, the door sliding open to allow us out onto the platform. The Siemens Venture coaches are definitely a step forward for rail travel in the US. They're certainly not perfect by any means, but it's something, and it will help the San Joaquin's route to improve service in the coming years. The last passengers board, the doors slide shut, and train 710 continues on towards Bakersfield. With our journey now at an end, it's time to bring today's video to a close. If you're new around here, I would really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button down below. It's totally free, and it really helps support the channel. Another huge thank you to my loyal patrons and members. Y'all are amazing, and your incredible generosity is greatly appreciated. If you too want your name in the video, or just want to support the channel in more ways than one, then head on over to the links in the description below. But anyways, that's all I have for today. Thanks for riding with me, and I'll see you in the next one.